Hi, I'm Eric Schmidt, and I write about music for Dirt. My Morning Jacket is a five-piece rock band from Louisville, Kentucky. But beyond that, it's hard to describe in words a sound that ranges from haunting country to reverb-drenched psychedelia. In this interview, guitarist Carl Bromel rejects several attempts to explain the band's evolving sound, an amazing new album titled Z. The theme of the conversation, he says, is that it all just happened naturally. My Morning Jacket plays in Boulder at the Fox Theater October 31st. Cool. So uh, I guess maybe maybe a good place to start is um, how did how did you come about uh, joining the band? How did that come together? Um, I was living in Los Angeles, and uh, I've been there for four years playing music on my own. Um, and uh, I kind of caught wind that they were doing auditions, and uh, I called my friend Bobby, who was friends with Jim. And uh, he kind of put in a good word for me, so I got a good slot. I went in there and played, and uh, went really good. Uh, I like the guys; they seem really cool. And I, I mean, I obviously love the records up to that point a lot. I was a fan, so um, you know, it was just kind of a really mellow audition. And then I went out and played. Uh, they asked me to do the rest of the touring for the record It Still Moves. Uh, Johnny and Danny left the band and uh, did that for all of last year. And then when it came time to make a new record, they asked Bo and I to join them and go to the studio and make the record and join the band. So all right. it's kind of a three, you know, three-step yeah. mellow process, you know. And I know you're in a couple bands um, before this, so like kind of the short version, like you know, what, how did those prepare you for this, and like what kind of, you know, what kind of like influences are you bringing in? Um, well, um, the band, I had a band called Old Pike. Okay. And I grew up in Indiana, and uh, I had a band with my friends, and we made a record for Sony. I think in 1999, um, it was kind of a, just like a rock band, kind of like the Heartbreakers or the Bruce Springsteen or something like that. Okay. Um, that was kind of like where I was coming from musically. I mean, I, I went to music school for at IU in Bloomington, studied classical music. So I don't know. I'm kind of into all sorts of stuff, but. You know, I like all the classic stuff, like Neil Young and Band and Octel and all that stuff, you know, just all the normal stuff. That, okay. You know. Um, which kind of leads into for, you know, for the older My Morning Jacket albums, like, you know, for a band that, that had almost been described as country at one point, like, you know, you put in this, this Z record and it's it's very different. Like, um, you know, it, it, it's part of that sound like, you know, the, the new members coming in, or, um, you know, how much did that have to do with the sound of the new record, and what else caused that? I think I think the different sounding parts of the record are a combination of just all the stuff that happened in the last year or two. Okay. With everybody, you know, I think the guys were, even if, you know, I think, I think Bo and I definitely added our own little things, but I don't think anybody else in the band is... I'm about to get run over by a truck. <laughs> Hang on a second, I guess. Yeah, take, take your time. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, what was I trying to say? Uh, well, I think, I think everybody in the band was wanting to change. So, you know, I was always open for doing new things. And, okay. You know, one of the things Jim told me, like, really early on is that this band can be whatever it needs to be. It doesn't have to be anything. At all, you know, it can all be constantly evolving. Right. Projects. Yeah, you know, and, uh, and I think uh, you know it, that's, that's happening. You know, with new, with a couple new members, I'm sure changes things. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with the other records, so I 
didn't really say how they were made differently or right. whatever, except for the obvious stuff. You know, we worked at a producer, we to a studio. Um, you know, we had spent the better part of a whole, well, they've been spending the last four years playing all those other songs, so being another one, trying to do some different things and have the live show be a little different and, you know, make it interesting for us, too, and see if we can, like, push what this band can be instead of kind of making the same kind of record. I mean, I think there's definitely songs on Z that are reminiscent of maybe the earlier records. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think, I don't, to me, I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. Like, because I'm like, but I'm in the thick of it, so, you know, it just seems natural where we are now to where we were before we made the album. Right, okay. But I can understand that, you know, the predominance of keyboards and, you know, reliance on shorter songs. You know, those are obvious. Some of it was conscious and some of it wasn't, you know. More of an evolution than a, like, what, let's, let's change things or something like that. Right, yeah, yeah. Kind of on that note, what, what, um, you know, what, I don't know, how, how did this out, recording this album go for you, and like, you know, what were you trying to do on it, how did it come out, and any thoughts on, on the album itself? Um, what, what, ask me that again, sorry, that was, that was a bunch of big, big questions at once, um, I just did basically how, how do you like how the album came out, what do you think about it? I like it a lot, um, um, I'm real happy with it. I, it's kind of a hard question to answer, you know. I, it, it, we just did what we did. I, I was really excited to to go to the studio. It was just a fun time. We just had a great time making the record. And I think uh, hopefully it translated. Right. Um, and then how was... I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't really have any ulterior motives or goals really with it just to do what needed to be done you know try to do my part um whatever that may be whether it's playing or not playing or playing saxophone or right you now or whatever you know whatever it takes to get the song finished and um you know how was how was working with John um, Lucky and, and why did you end up choosing him and, and what did he what did he bring into it? Uh, actually, Jim met with John a few times on a recommendation and really liked him, uh, so he just kind of asked us to trust him on that. So he came in and uh, it was awesome. He, he, you know, he's got so much experience and you can tell when someone is that experienced that they don't they don't have to try too hard to get their message across to you, you know, they don't, he, uh, he's, he's a really smart guy, 